Amen. All right. Well, hey, how many guys have learned this one, Bobby? Maybe you've learned this one, but uh, it seems like the longer you've been a Christian, uh, the longer you've been around what I call church world, okay? Have you noticed that uh, churches, we can do some pretty weird things? Have you noticed that? Uh, in fact, I noticed that some of the weird things that we do are actually on our church signs. Now, not ours. Ours is handled wonderfully. Give it up for Tom. Whew. It's called backstroke and ministry, but that's right. Not our sign, uh, other churches' signs. And um, you tell me if we do some weird things with our signs, okay? Let's take a look at, at that. Uh, this, I'm not making this up. These are on actual churches around the United States. But this one said, hey, don't let worries kill you. Let the church help. Huh? That's a great message to the community. We do a much better job. You know, we'll take you right out. And speaking of which, this church actually said this. I'm not kidding you. It says, hey, we love hurting people. Come on in. Don't you want to join us? We just, we'll smash you in the face or something. What? That's not, but sometimes churches try to get funny with their church signs. Have you noticed that? Like this one said this one. It's quaint. Our church is like fudge, sweet with a few nuts. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, kind of true, but we'll move on, won't we? Uh, but, you know, sometimes the, the humor, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of out there. Like this one says, hey, does life stink? We have a pew for you. <laughs> Isn't that funny, Christian humor? Yeah, whatever. Uh, but then sometimes churches, they're a little bit, you know, you can tell there's a little bit of conflict going on by their signs. Like this one said this, hey, whoever stole our AC units, keep one. It's, gonna, it's hot where you're going. <laughs> wow, could you imagine that? <laughs> I'm not making this up. Woo. That's right. With all due respect, stay away. From that church. Now, speaking of down under and the flames and fire, sometimes churches go after their pastors in these subtle ways uh, with their church signs. For instance, one church actually said this. I can't believe it. Do you know what hell is? Come hear our preacher. <laughs> I don't know if that's their way of getting back at him or a cry, a plea to help from the community. Help us, help, help, help. We're suffering. Uh, but that's not all they get even uh, deeper than that. One said this Hey, now's a good time to visit. Our pastor's on vacation. <laughs> Well, no wonder the guy's all discouraged. Come on. Gee, man, I tell you why. But sometimes, sometimes it gets even worse than that. This one actually said this. Hey, having trouble sleeping? Try one of our sermons. <laughs> no wonder he went on vacation. He's getting away from you guys. That's right. But you know, sometimes churches, they did resort to some really horrible means and what they do with their pastor. Like this one said this. Hey, best sausage supper in St. Louis. Come and eat Pastor Thomas Ressler. Just give him a severance package. Lay him off. Do something. Don't eat the guy. What are you talking about? But hey, I tell you what, the weirdest thing I've ever seen a church do with their son. This has got to be a sign of apostasy in that church. I'm not making this up. This church actually put this to their community on the church sign, and it simply says this, God loves fried chicken. <laughs> and obviously that apostasy is spread here at sunrise. <laughs> Can you believe, of all things, God loves fried chicken. <laughs> Okay. Now, folks, that's not just weird. That last one was evil. Okay, that's obvious. Okay. Uh, but uh, but the churches do weird things with signs, right? If you notice that, we Christians can do some funny things once in a while. But I tell you what, Jim, the, the, one of the weirdest things I've seen churches do with their signs has got to be this. Okay, it's like this. I mean, here you have the Bible. The Bible, the Word of God. And what's in here? This book is chock full of signs that Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back. But you don't advertise it. You don't talk about it, you don't teach on it, you don't preach on it, you actually not only keep your mouth shut about it, you discourage people from learning about that news. Isn't that weird? We're Christians, we're supposed to let people share within the signs, it's getting close. Jesus is coming back. Why? Because the Bible's clear, folks. Before Jesus comes back at his second coming, he comes at the end of the seven-year tribulation, which means before he comes back, what's the earth going to go through? The seven-year tribulation, okay? And the Bible's clear that is an outpouring of God's wrath on this wicked and rebellious planet. You don't want to be there. Jesus said, I didn't. Jesus said it's the worst time in the history of mankind, never to be repeated again, and that unless God shortened that time frame, the entire human race would be destroyed. Don't you think the people around us need to hear about that sign? Okay? And that's why we're going to continue our study. And that's right, the final uh, countdown update. Now, if you've been tracking with us, we've already seen, folks, that uh, with the first nine updates on the final countdown study, and that was certainly the Jewish people, the Antichrist, modern technology, worldwide people, the rise of falsehood, the rise of wickedness, the rise of apostasy, the rise of a one world religion, and the last five times, who's counting, Bobby? I am. 
Bobby is saying, give it for Bobby, that's right, is the rise of a one world government. And what we saw that God gave us a sign. And here's a sign. You don't know the exact day nor the hour, but it's getting close. When you see all the world's governments coming together as one, which is happening right now today, Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back. Okay, at the end of the seven year tribulation, he's going to come in the sky and get his church at the rapture, which you don't want to miss. You can escape the seven-year tribulation. And we saw that with the quotational proof, the coercive proof, the union proof, the control proof, and the last two times with the monitor proof, where we saw how the Antichrist is going to monitor our whole planet, yes, he is, and control everything that people do with a big brother surveillance society. Why? Because the Bible says he's going to make, he's going to order, he's going to force, he's going to cause people to do whatever he's going to do. It's on a global basis. How are you going to do that? Well, you got to have the big brother system in place to pull that off. And we saw it's already being implemented. Listen, not 50 years down the road, not 10 years from now, it's already here and it's already being implemented. And we saw that with our information system, the satellite system, the transportation system, these cameras going up uh, everywhere. And last time with our communication system, starting with our cell phones. Turn to somebody and encourage them one more time. How about those cell phones? Aren't those things exciting? As we saw, if you were here last week, there's a multitude of ways that we can be tracked with these cell phones. Our friends, our family, the government behind our back, including the police. And they're listening to our conversation, watching our every move, seeing what we're doing. They even have the ability to peer out of our phones and see who we're with, what we're doing, the whole nine yards. It's not make-believe. It's not science fiction. It's not coming. It's already here and already being done. So the point we saw is all it's going to take is for one guy to hijack the whole system, and he can monitor the planet for the first time in mankind's history. That's how close we're getting. We do not know the day nor the hour, but folks, it is getting close. But that's not all. The fourth way the Antichrist is developing a global monitoring system is with what I call our location system. And as you can see with the graphic there, that would imply our homes, our house, our apartment, wherever you live, your pad, whatever you want to call it, that which we thought was our private domain is not private anymore. The home invasion has begun. In fact, what's very interesting, if you take a look at the words of Jesus, he said in the seven-year tribulation, if you made the horrible mistake of rejecting him today and being thrust into the seven-year tribulation, which I do not recommend, nor does he. And if you find yourself in the seven-year tribulation, he specifically says, whatever you do, don't go back to your house. I wonder why. Well, we'll see that today, but let's go ahead and remind ourselves of those words from Jesus. Open your Bibles to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and we're going to read uh, verses 15 through 22 again. And uh, we were here a little bit back, and we saw the context here is the halfway point of the seven-year tribulation. Okay, And again, so he's talking about the Jewish elect. He's talking about those people uh, who get saved after the seven-year tribulation. Again, you should get saved now. Avoid the whole thing. But uh, that's who he's talking about here. And this is the midway point. Okay, And uh, here's what's going to happen. And here's what Jesus says, not just what you should do, he's going to tell us what you should not do. And believe it or not, it has everything to do with your house, with your home. And I think a little bit more than that. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at what Jesus says there. Matthew 24, uh, starting at verse 15, says this. So when you see standing Jesus speaking in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then those who are in Judea, what? Here's what you should do. Now again, He's talking to the people during the seven-year tribulation. Get saved now, avoid the whole thing. But those people who make that horrible mistake, what should you do? Run. Flee, run. Okay, thank you. Uh, flee to the mountains, okay? Let no one, now here's what you should not do. Let no one on the roof of his what? House, he calls it out. House, go down to take anything out of his what? House. In fact, let no one in the field go back to what? Get his cloak, why not? Because how dreadful it's going to be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. In fact, you better pray that your flight will not uh, take place in the winter or on the Sabbath. Why? For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, Jesus speaking here, and never to be equaled again. In fact, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days, Jesus says, 
will be shortened. Now, we've been in this passage a couple different times before, and what we saw is this is the midway point. This is where the Antichrist shows his true colors, if you will. The Jewish people have been under a temporary blindness, as Paul even says today, Romans chapter 11, okay? And they think this guy is great. They strike a deal with him, Daniel 9, 27. That's what starts the seven-year tribulation. But at this point, the guy finally shows his true colors. How? He does the abomination of desolation that Jesus says, spoken of the prophet Daniel. He goes up into the rebuilt Jewish temple. He walks walks in there and says, now worship me. I am God. Okay. Now, obviously the Jewish people are going to reject this. Okay. Their eyes are open at this point, the Bible talks about, but it comes at an unfortunate price. Zechariah tells us at this time, two thirds of the Jewish people are going to be annihilated. And then we saw prior to that, there's another judgment in the seven year tribulation, the first half, one fourth of the earth is going to be annihilated. And then just after that, in the trumpet judgments we saw before, there's going to be another one third of the earth is going to be annihilated. So in just these three judgments alone, one half of the planet is going to be taken out. How many of you guys would say that's kind of a rough time? And that's just those three judgments. There's tons and tons and tons throughout a seven-year ongoing period, okay? God's wrath is going to be poured out. But Jesus says here, these people, again, avoid the whole thing, get saved now. But if you reject him and you're still alive, you're going to be thrust into this horrible time frame. He says at that time, your only option, those people, is you need to flee. And he not only tells us again what you should do, i.e. flee, run, 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 run to the hills. He says, whatever you do, don't make this mistake. Do not go back to your house. Now, it's an interesting word here. It's the Greek word okia, that's plural, oikos, uh, singular, and it means, yes, house, but it literally means any inhabited edifice, inhabited edifice or dwelling. And so maybe in the context here, why Jesus says specifically your only option is to get out of town, right, get out of the populace, flee to the mountains, is maybe because any oikos, oikia, it's not going to be safe at this time. Certainly your house, but maybe also that would include your workplace. Don't go back to your job, if you will, and get your cloak. Don't go to your house. Don't get nothing. Just, man, run is your only option. Now, again, I say this to belabor the point. If you're here today and you're not born again, get saved now and avoid the whole thing. But if you make this horrible mistake and continue to reject Jesus Christ today, he says, whatever you do, don't go back to your house very well. Don't go back to your workplace. Don't do nothing. You better just run. Why? Because has it occurred to you that big brother, the antichrist, big eye in the sky and down here below, that not even your home, your oikos is going to be safe from his reach? And for those of you who think that this is just science fiction, because people say, well, I'm just going to go back to my house and hide out, right? <laughs> no. As we already saw before, folks, not only do they have radar guns right now that can peer through concrete walls and see if you're trying to hide behind there, so much for that, but they also have satellites with the same capabilities, and drones can do it as well. But see, they don't even need all that stuff externally. They've, they've conditioned us, just like we're the ones paying for those cell phones, aren't we? But see, there's another device that everybody just has to have, and we bring it into our home. And those devices are simply called computers, right? And if you think about that, that's all that a cell phone is, just a sophisticated miniaturized computer. And, and it doesn't matter, folks, if you just use your computer in your house, your oikos, just for playing games. It doesn't matter. Believe it or not, just like we saw last week, if you were here with a cell phone, this is one of the biggest bugging, tracking, watching, listening, monitoring devices ever invented by man. And since we bring it into our home, and it stays typically in our home, guess who gets to see us in our home and hear us in our home. And believe it or not, it's already being done. The first way we're being monitored in our homes right now via those computers that we all just have to have, right? Okay, is with what's called data tracking. Now pay attention for those of you who do any kind of searches on the internet. I've said this before, but you're gonna see even more proof today. As weird as this sounds, as scary as this sounds, if you're doing things you probably shouldn't do, Listen to this. Every search you perform online, I'll say it again. Every search you perform online, including Google, other ones do it too, goes into a giant database which is used to create a profile on all our habits and all our interests. Search engines track what links you click on during your search and then use that information to instantly provide us with targeted ads. Have you guys noticed that? It's proof that we are being monitored live as we type stuff in. You can search for something like, hey, I wonder what they're doing over in Hawaii, right? Next thing you know, 
as you're just off on something else, off on the right side, down below on the sides, above where they have the ads, what are popping up on the side? Hey, airline tickets to Hawaii. How about a rental car to Hawaii? Have you checked out this hotel for... I said, wait, wait a second. How did you know I was even thinking about Hawaii? Because it's being monitored. Everything is being monitored. Listen, not just stored for later retrieval. With that common example, it's happening live right now as we do it. That's how far this has progressed. Now, they do it in a couple different ways, and one of the biggest ways is they do it with these things called cookies. And no, I'm not talking about yours, Jeanette. Yours are awesome. And they're healthy and good for you and make you smile. These don't make you smile, okay? These actually watch you, monitor you, uh, and do all kinds of things. You say, well, why do they install these cookies? Because they're on the back end of websites, your computers. They put them inside your computer. It, it tracks everything you do. It's data loggers, everything, your passwords. They see it. They see what you type, they, everything. And the reason why is because it's a gold mine for companies who then take all this information that they're learning off of us on what we do on our computers, they sell it to companies who then provide targeted ads to us. But in order to get that, wait a second, that means they know everything about us and what we're doing. Even the news is reporting on it. Let's take a look. So if someone is surfing online, if you or I are just surfing around looking up some stuff, do we have any idea, any warning that we're being tracked? Not right now. Trackers are companies you've never heard of, actually, most of them. I mean, they're small companies whose business it is to put little tiny things of software on websites, and those send back information about you, and they compile a profile. And it's not your name, usually, but it's everything about you, and there's a unique ID number associated with you. We did find that the biggest trackers were Google and Microsoft, companies you've heard of. The third largest, though, was Quantcast, which most people have not heard of. But what, what more can they find out about us online? I mean, can they tell exactly what, what movies I like or what I like to eat or what, what products I use? Right. Well, we were surprised by our findings because we did actually find um, our lead example was a woman who they, the tracker on her computer actually knew every one of her favorite movies. We, um, we, were, we wrote about a girl who was 17 years old and worried about her weight, and the tracker on her computer also knew that. Um, we talked to a woman who was worried about whether she might have some sort of um, uterine disorder and that she also was being targeted with ads. Well... So much, Tom, for being anonymous. You just thought it was you and your own little thing, you and your computer, just sitting there typing this stuff in. Everything is being cataloged. Now, what you need to know, it's not just companies that are doing this because they profit big time, right? Because it's not just advertising, hoping you do it. It's targeted, and they know what you like, and it increases their odds of you making a purchase. So they're doing this for money, but they're also doing it with the government. Please turn to somebody and say, shocker. Okay. <laughs> the government is getting caught with doing this. Once again, the NSA is in on action. And they're not just relying on this kind of stuff. They're getting even more invasive than that. They are actually, and they've just got caught, planting bugs. Listen to this. Planting bugs in our computer. But this gives them the ability to even know what we're doing with our computer, on our computer. Listen to this. Even when it's not online. Watch this. The National Security Agency has reportedly installed software and computers around the world that lets the United States government monitor those machines even if the computers are not connected to the Internet. They can get to you whether you're online or not. That's according to the reporting of the New York Times citing NSA documents, computer experts, and U.S. officials. According to those sources, the secret technology could also let the NSA launch a cyber attack. Nothing is surprising anymore. Nothing. No, no, it's not. Well, what's a little different about this is there's no flat denial by the NSA. It's yeah. basically saying to us, don't worry about it. We only use this for going after the bad guys. But again, if you were here last week, that's the rationale, right? What if you became the bad guy? What if just simply something as simple as being a Christian was determined as being a bad guy? And if you don't think it's coming, folks, you better pay attention to the hate crime laws we saw before. Because you and I disagree with certain moral behavior, homosexuality, name one, that's being considered a hate crime, right? And so if you believe that, you're a detriment to society and you're a bad guy. It's all coming, folks, okay? But again, notice he says they're not even denying it anymore, right? They're not even denying it, okay? And you might be thinking, well, how in the world are they able to get to your computer uh, when you're not even on the internet? You're thinking, oh, I should be safe, right? No. Now, one of the ways they're doing it is through wireless technology huh 
Have you noticed that? Everything's going wireless. Remember back in the days when you, you got your first computer there and it cost $9,322 and could hardly even play solitaire, but it was fun. I remember that one, the Apple way back in the day. It was, you know, had to drag it around in a cart, wherever you went, right? But remember back in the days with the computers, uh, you had to plug into the internet, right? You, you, your peripherals, your printer, your, your mouse, all these things had a cable that had to plug in and do all that stuff. But not anymore. Everything is gone wireless, okay? Why? Because, and I quote, the wireless breakthrough could make the, quote, invisible, visible. This is one of the ways they're able to access your computer. It's through the wireless signal, okay, uh, in your home. Quote, hackers can steal data from PCs wirelessly that aren't even online. So if hackers are already doing that, how do you think the NSA and other people are doing it as well? This is just one way, okay? Researchers from the MIT Wireless Center and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, there's that AI thing again, okay, uh, have developed a wireless system that can not only access your computer, even if it's not, quote, online because of wireless. Listen, they've also developed the ability, because of wireless technology, it's all out in the air, to, quote, track movement of people through a wall with wireless abilities. And they can also detect subtle gestures like the rise and fall of a person's chest through which a person's, uh, also their heart rate, can also be measured with a 99% uh, accuracy. And this technology can be used for the military and law enforcement, listen, and can track the movements of humans, quote, staying behind closed rooms or hiding behind a wall. You know, like during the seven-year tribulation, you didn't listen to Jesus, you should have got saved before, avoided the whole thing, but now you're there, somehow you're still alive at the halfway point, and he said, flee to the hills. He says, no, I'm going back to my house. They'll see you. They'll see everybody wherever you're at. And one of the ways is through wireless. And scientists are now working on a higher resolution system which can detect body silhouettes, gestures, and even emotions because of this wireless technology. Now, you start to think, well, wait a second. That goes everywhere, right? Because the trend is what? Not just our homes go wireless. Everything's going wireless. Have you noticed that? Go down to the coffee shop. What do they offer? Wireless. Go to this restaurant. What do they offer? Wireless. Everything is going wireless, okay? Cafes, shops, stores, you name it. It's wireless. Come on in. Stay well. Spend some cash. But everything's going wireless. In fact, whether you realize it or not, uh, Jordan and I talked about this. He was from Canada, and it's here in the U.S. too, not just Canada. But now the latest trend is whole towns are going wireless. Whole, they're called Wi-Fi towns. Check it out. Wi-Fi towns, they're providing, everybody's got to be wireless. Everybody in the whole town, is, don't we love you, community? Everybody can go wireless, right? Every, it's called Wi-Fi mesh as well. That, they blanket the whole community. So now everyone can be hacked. Everyone can be seen through any oikos, home, building, workplace, coffee shop, who's trying to hide no matter where you're at. You starting to get an idea? I think it's a loaded term, me personally. Why Jesus said of all places, don't even think of going back to your house. Your private domain is not private anymore. They will find you. But it gets worse than that. Uh, it's not just seeing if you're hiding in there. They're actually going to be seeing you in there. And that's because the second way we're being monitored in our house is with webcams. That's right. Who's watching who? Now, as we saw before, this is not just coming. This is already going on. Okay? We saw it's such a common thing that they have a term for it. We saw before. It's called ratters. And ratters are able to type into, uh, tap into anybody's webcam anywhere around the world, and they, use, and they spy on people, right? That's the term, ratters. They, they post them on YouTube. You can check it out. We saw that before. I don't want to belabor that, okay? But my point is, um, oh, by the way, when you buy a computer, a laptop, wh what do they have? And you didn't even order it. Webcams are built into them. Interesting. Some of the smart TVs, all that stuff, we saw that before, okay? Uh, but another range that everybody just has to have is not just these webcams that can be hacked and monitored and watched, is baby cams, right? You young up and coming parents, you guys going to get a baby cam? No pressure. I don't even know if that, well, let's just move on. Uh, uh, baby cams, right? Moms and dads, don't you want to use this technology to keep track of little Johnny and Susie and make sure that they're safe from afar? Well, the problem is, folks, not only could you as a parent, yeah, watch your child from afar with a webcam, a baby cam, but so can other people, and it's already happening. Watch this. This is creepy. 
here's a look at what we're talking about here. These IP cameras, just like this one, many parents use them in their child's nursery to help keep an eye on them, and you can control them so easily from your phone, your iPad, your laptop. But imagine waking up in the middle of the night to find someone has been using your baby monitor to watch your child and your home. Sound asleep about midnight. All of a sudden I heard, it sounded like a man's voice, but you know, I was so asleep I wasn't sure. Disoriented and confused, Heather Shrek picked up her cell phone to check the camera in her 10-month-old daughter Emma's room. She could see the camera moving, which didn't make sense because she wasn't moving it. About the time I saw it moving, I also heard a voice again start screaming at my daughter. He was screaming, um, wake up baby, wake up baby, and then just a long ah screaming at her, I guess trying to wake her up. That's when Heather's husband Adam ran into Emma's room and describes how the camera then turned from his petrified daughter to point directly at him. And then it screamed at me. What did it say? Uh, just some bad things. Yeah, some obscenities I had. All right, for those of you who are the eternal optimist, I guess one positive side effect is that's the ultimate excuse as to why your child is using that language. It wasn't me, Bill. Somebody hacked into my baby cam, and he was taught her that word, and it didn't. Okay, in all seriousness, is that creepy or what? Okay, and that's going on, folks. That's how it, uh, invasive uh, it really is. Okay, but see, there's another trend that's going on. There's cameras are going everywhere. All right, these webcams, baby cams, but they're also good for other oikos. That's your business, right? Business has got to have these, right? You keep track of your employees, see what they're doing, or for theft issues. But see, the problem is, folks, just like with the baby cams, they too can be hacked. In fact, they're so easily hacked on a global basis, by the way, I kid you not, a guy from Russia, of all places, demonstrated how easy it is to hack into these webcams. I don't care what traffic cams, baby cams, uh, computer, uh, laptop cams, uh, business cam, you name it, security cams, everywhere. He actually put up a website recently and had tens of thousands, listen, tens of thousands of live feed of webcams all over the world and posted it online for everybody to see just how vulnerable this whole system is. Let's take a look at that. A Russian-backed website is peering into homes around the world this morning. Many are here right in the United States. Anyone can log on to see the live feeds from your bedroom to security systems, all with a map straight to your front door. Charlie Daggett is in London, where the government is demanding that Russia take this site down. Charlie, good morning. Good morning. The website has actually been up and running for months, peering into offices and people's bedrooms for all the world to see. It claims it's doing it for their own good, shining a light on the problem of weak security. They have eyes on everywhere. So-called private webcams a couple clicks away from anyone with an internet connection. Businesses like this shop in Amarillo, a laundromat in Salt Lake City, a university like this one in Iowa private homes right down to baby monitors. These are children's bedrooms in the United States this morning. I wonder what else this morning you're watching and we have no clue about. Interesting. So much for personal privacy. Looks to me like you can use that computer with this extension here, this peripheral, and the, or if it's already built in. They're not just going to be able to see you if you're hiding behind a wall. They're going to watch you inside the wall with all these cameras, okay? No wonder Jesus says, don't go back to your house. No place to hide, not in this system. Again, get saved today and avoid the whole thing. The third way, it isn't just watching, they're listening. The third way that we're being monitored in our homes with our computers is with built-in microphones, huh? huh? Once again, a computer is just a bigger version of a cell phone and vice versa. Right? And cell phones, we all know, have a microphone built into them. Well, so does your computer. Okay? And you may not see it, but it's there. Okay? And these microphones not only allow others to listen on you, but once again, even on the internet. And one of the biggest culprits of this, and they're not the only one, is Google. And with their web browser called Chrome, uh, it has this nifty function. Right when you go to the front page of Google to start your search, if you use that, if you notice right there on the search, right there on the right-hand side is a microphone. The problem is, even when you tell it not to record what you're saying, it still records what you're saying, 
and even gives you a nifty and other people a word for word typewritten report. Watch this. Just go to google.com and right there in the middle of Google's most sacred real estate is the speech button. Let me show you how a malicious site can listen in on anything that is said next to your computer even after you've left that site. Here I am visiting a site that uses speech recognition for completely legitimate reasons. It is a voice activated to do app. Let's give it a go. So Chrome's asked for my permission to access my microphone and since I know this will only be used for this app, I allow it. Here you can see that Chrome shows a clear indication that it is listening to my voice. To do, shop for groceries. To do, prepare demo video. Cool, it works. Now let's try another command. Turn off mic. As you can see, it's stopped listening. And since I'm done with this site, I can close it and get on with my day, visit other sites, or even turn away from my computer completely to have a phone call. But as I'm about to show you, the malicious sites you visited can continue listening in on you long after you've left it. As long as Chrome is still running, nothing said next to your computer is private. As you can clearly see here, I am now on a different site. I've closed the site I've authorised to listen to me and there is no indication that what I am saying is being recorded. And yet, Google Chrome is listening. In this hidden pop under window, everything I said was captured, sent back to Google analysed and then sent back to the malicious site where it could have been saved or sent on to any other server in the world. Wow, that's exciting. What she said is, I mean, first of all, I don't know about you guys, but especially if you, you know, anybody does the one finger typing, but you're pretty fast at it now? I mean, typing can really get on your nerves. So, I mean, if you were working for, you know, the NSA or you're working for Big Brother or the Antichrist at this time and and, you know, you had to give a written report of what that person said inside their house. <laughs> this is great. It automatically does it for you. Word for word, exactly what they were saying. And notice that it was, you know, word for and put in a database. And so, therefore, you could not only see if somebody's in their house, you could see what they're saying inside their house, you know. Is that just, you know, some average Joe? Uh, or is that a Christian who's trying to hide from me? Hey, Bob. Where's the Bible? Gotcha. No, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. It's tall typed out. See, you didn't realize it, but your computer was listening to your every word. Google's not the only one. If you think they are, uh, remember last week, Swampland? Still got a couple parcels left. See me after the service. Okay. Uh, Lord willing. Uh, Facebook. Listen to this. Facebook recently rolled out a new feature that's leaving some of its users, quote, speechless. <gasps> The social network's new app allows them to turn on your smartphone's microphone, listen in on what's around you, and identify what you're listening to, the music, TV shows, etc. Well, that's just a cell phone. I'm sure they wouldn't do that with your computer. Once again, Swampland, after the service. We'll talk about that later. Whoa. So they can see you if you're trying to hide. They can watch you from inside. They can listen to you. What's next? Well, speaking of a typewritten report, anything that you type is not safe because the fourth way is with our emails. Now, we saw this before, folks, in the past, and this is easy to demonstrate. One of the projects that was used in the past uh, is with Project Echelon, all right? That's been out there for years. That's common knowledge. Even the History Channel reports on that, okay? So it's not some conspiracy theory. But as we saw before, Project Echelon monitors uh, 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 emails, phone calls, data, all that, uh, faxes, all that stuff, but emails was one of them. And what they do is they look for buzzwords, code words, under the rationale of trying to find the bad guy. And so they're monitoring all the emails and everything else, and if they see the word terrorist or bomb, it gets flagged, it goes to report onto somebody's desk. That's not make-believe, that's been being done for years. But you don't have to work at the NSA. You don't have to be a part of Project Echelon to do this. So it is. Guess who's involved in this? Rhymes with Google. Hey, that's right, Mary. It's Google. Man, you're awesome. Get up for Mary. Man, she's paying attention. That's great. Uh, and, and for proof of that, uh, I want to show you just one example. Uh, they actually turned in a guy to the authorities based on what they saw he typed in his Google email account. Let's take a look at that. 
John Skillern was convicted of sexually assaulting a child 20 years ago. Now police say technology unthinkable back then caught this sex offender preying on kids again. They got a tip from Google, basically Gmail. Detective David Nettles is with the Houston Metro Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. He says Skillern used his Google account to email a friend three explicit pictures of a young girl. The company's software detected the pictures and they turned him in. He was trying to get around getting caught, was just keeping it inside of his email, I would never be able to find that. Google wouldn't respond to our questions about their technology to fight child porn. I really don't know how they do their um, job, but I'm just glad they do it. Now, before I go any further, don't misunderstand me. I'm not at all condoning what that guy did. Being involved with child pornography and things of that nature, I do believe the guy needs to be prosecuted for that, so let's set that clear. That's not the point, though. Okay? The point is just what in the world is Google's job? as he saw. They turned him in to the authorities based on what they saw in his email account that he thought was his own private information. And again, I disagree with what he did, and I think he does need to be prosecuted for it. That's not the point. What if they determined that being a Christian was a crime? Quoting the Bible was a crime. And you tried to share any of that in your email, they're going to turn you into the authority? And don't think, folks, that it's not coming. But it gets even more invasive than that, Bill. No wonder Jesus says, don't go back to your house. Again, get saved and avoid the whole thing. But the fifth way we're being monitored in our homes with our computers is automated home system. Huh? I mean, who in here as a guy does not love that thing called the remote control? Huh? That was almost as exciting as getting married, right? Yeah, you know it's true, but you're chicken to say. And I need to ride home after service. But anyway, that's right. Uh, but wow, what an invention. When that thing came along, remember that? And you young whippersnappers have no idea what I'm talking about. Remember you actually had to get up off the couch and you had to go with that thing, right? And about made that noise too, right? All right. But uh, man, these remote controls, you don't have to get off the couch. You just sit there, change the channels. Woo, so convenient. It does all the rest, controls it. But hey, pay attention, you couch potatoes. That's right. Now they've got the technology. You cannot just remote control your TV. Now you can remote control your whole house. And I mean your whole house. Okay, I'm talking thermostats, appliances, washer and dryers, you name it, smoke detectors, even your lights. And guess who's really promoting that? Rhymes again with Google. That's right, Jim. Give it up for Jim. That's right, Google. Google just spent, I kid you not, 3.2 billion, not million, 3.2 billion for one company. And that company is called Nest, right? Like your home is a Nest, right? And that thing that Google now owns will watch everything going on in your house. But it's all for you and your convenience. Let's take a look at that all around the world. The home is the center of people's lives. It's where you start your day and end your day. It's where you raise a family and make memories with the people you love. So wouldn't it be cool if our homes could be more aware? If our homes could learn from us and help take care of us? At Nest, we do just that. It all started with the Nest Learning Thermostat. Then. Can Nest protect? But for us, that was just the beginning. That means those days that you might wake up a little bit earlier, before you even get out of bed, we can let Nest know that, so it can then adjust the temperature in the room to start to be for my daytime. As you get into your car and drive home, the car will, in the background, send the estimated time of arrival to your Nest thermostat. So your home can be at the right temperature as you arrive at home. Why would we ever bring the thermostat and washer together? That's a good question. If you look at it from a perspective of energy consumption, it's an easy one. These are the big energy consumptions at the home, and they're also the one which require a lot of day-to-day -day interaction with the consumer. If you have already the thermostat communicating to the utility company, it's much easier if there's one signal going to the nest, and that is disseminated through the household to all appliances to basically reduce consumption now because we're the peak. LifeX is a LED light bulb that you control with your smartphone. When we first heard about the Nest Developer Program, we were really excited to be a part of it. 
With Nest Protect and LifeX, when the smoke alarm event is triggered, we can pulse your lights red, which can help you see in the dark, as well as give extra notification that there's a problem in the house, which is especially good if you're hearing impaired. Nest brings this whole other dimension to LifeX. Who would have thought by combining Nest products and LifeX products, we could help save lives? Save lives? Or monitor lives? Google owns that. Pay big cash for that. I don't know about you, but do you really want Big Brother? Do you really want Google now controlling all of your house? I mean, if you resist, we'll just turn off your heater. Turn off your light. Google is controlling. You're already monitoring behind my back my computer, my emails, websites. You're listening to me. Do I really want Google controlling my home? I don't think so. Oh, speaking of lights, did you notice that the lights, they could flash different lights, you know, because LED lights. Lots of neat things you could do with LED, LED lights. And if you notice, just like with wireless, everybody's not only got to go wireless, but everybody's got to save the planet and be a good environmentalist and go green. And we have to get rid of all those old light bulbs and replace them with the much more energy efficient LED lights. Have you noticed that push? Well, one thing that they're not telling you folks is um, those lights can do a whole lot more than just emit light. Those lights can watch you wherever you go. No wonder they're wanting us to switch them out. Let's take a look at that. Should you find yourself in Terminal B at Newark Airport, look up. Those aren't just new lights, they're smart lights. A sophisticated array of LED fixtures with built-in sensors and cameras connected over a wireless network. They monitor security, the flow of foot traffic. Hugh Martin is president of Sensity, the Silicon Valley company that developed the smart lights at Newark and this parking garage in San Jose. So these lights, they sense that we're walking? Yeah, there's a motion sensor in each individual light. This is one of just a few places in the country where a smart light network has been installed. This Silicon Valley building uses it primarily for security. And here's how it works. There are 40 lamp posts in this lot holding 83 LED lights connected to seven cameras in a seamless grid that is tracking and recording my every move. So we do use the license plate recognition and we also can detect people. Kevin Kirk is chief engineer for the Shorenstein Company, which owns this building. The company plans to install smart lights at their properties across the country. Everything goes up into the cloud, so we can access everything from anywhere. The future is limitless for this technology. The smart light network has the ability to spot an unattended bag at an airport and alert security, show drivers to empty parking spaces, alert shoppers of sales as they walk past retailers. There's no end to the kind of information you could gather. Yep. And therein lies the problem. In the future, the smart network could track every place we go, everything we buy, everything we do all the time. It sounds rather Orwellian. There are about four billion outside lights in the world today. Imagine all these lights connected in one global network. Yeah. Yeah. And then imagine that AI system that we saw before taps into the whole thing, controls it. Then the Antichrist comes along, he hijacks the whole thing, and he'll have the ability for the first time in mankind's history to watch everything on the planet. This is not coming, it's already being put into place. I wonder why Jesus says, run to the hills. You starting to think it's a loaded term there as well? Okay, but that's not all. You keep this up, I mean, all that's left is some big freaky big brother AI voice system that speaks inside your home and tells you what's going on and what you need to do and all that stuff. Well, that's right, Tom. Amazon just came out with that. There's other people, but Amazon calls it Echo. How'd you like to have this in your house as well? Amazon has created the Star Trek computer for your home. There's a new female computer voice you can talk to now, and her name is Alexa. Well, the device itself is actually called Amazon Echo. Amazon created a speaker you can put anywhere in your home. It's connected to the internet and responds to your family's voice commands. But before any question or command, you have to first say Alexa. 
The concept is just like what you can do with Android by saying, OK, Google, before a command. But the Amazon Echo does much more than a phone. You could ask her for the news, and she'll play the latest from NPR, ESPN, or your local radio station. You can set alarms, timers, even ask her to add items to your shopping list. Alexa, add wrapping paper to the shopping list. I've put wrapping paper on your shopping list. Alexa, how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? One tablespoon equals three teaspoons. Uh, okay. At the top near the light ring, you'll find seven microphones with technology that can hear you from any direction and while music is playing. Which means if you're trying to hide out in secret and Jim says, turn up the tunes so they can't hear what we're saying, they can still do it. So, I don't know, um, put all this together, the Antichrist taps into this whole system, everything we've seen over the last several weeks. The whole plan is tied together with these lights and cell phones and cameras and microphones and computers and you name it. Everything's all automated for us. And then instead of maybe saying, okay, Google, or okay, Alexa, to do anything, maybe that's what we'll have to do in the future. Okay, Antichrist, can I use my heater now? Okay, Antichrist, can I buy and sell? It's not that far-fetched, is it? But that's right, one last thing, and we'll close. Uh, for those of you who say, well, you know what, <sighs> Pastor Billy, I'm checking out of the system. I'm not going green. I'm going out of here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to unplug from the grid, right? I'm the ultimate survivor. I don't need electricity and all that stuff. They can't get me then, right? Well, pretty soon that might become a crime. You have to stay plugged in to the grid. Watch this. A Cape Coral woman says she's living off the grid. She doesn't use city power or water, but now she's being ordered to plug in or face the consequences. We first featured Robin Speronis in November. She showed us how she lives day to day with no running water or electricity. A code enforcement officer came, knocked on the door, then post a placard that says uninhabitable property, do not enter. A Cape Coral code enforcement officer posting this notice to vacate. No hearing, no nothing. Putting a woman who lives by herself, who's a widow, out on the street without any notice. But you don't get it, lady. This is all for your good. This is for your convenience. This is for your safety. And besides, if you unplug from the grid, then we couldn't monitor you. Folks, this is not make-believe. I've said this every week. This is not coming 50 years from now. This is not coming five years from now. It's already here, and it's already being put into place. For the first time in mankind's history, we have the ability right now for one man to literally control, monitor, watch, listen, track anyone, anywhere, virtually in the world, whether you're out in the public or the place where Jesus says don't go to, even in your home. There's only one way out of this mess, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that's why we see every single time, folks, this is the message we need to get out there. Luke 21, 28, Jesus said also, when these things begin to take place and they're taking place now, what do you do? Stand up, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Jesus Christ is coming back to get us his church at the rapture. Anybody excited about that? Okay, but let's not get there empty handed. Let's let people know that there is no way you're going to survive this thing on your own. You need to escape the whole thing and get saved today through Jesus Christ. And again, one last time, if you're here today and you're not saved, you can scoff and mock all you want. But as soon as you see the church disappear, your worst nightmare just began. And you thought this was bad? This is child's play compared to what's coming. Get saved today. Amen? Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church and Get a Life Ministries. And I hope you enjoyed today's study. But in closing, before you go, let me ask you, one final question. If you were to die today, are you sure that you go to heaven and not hell? You see, here's the problem. The Bible says that nobody automatically gets to go to heaven, and that's because God is holy and we are not. The Bible says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness or the wrong things that we have done have separated us from God. And the wages of our sin or unholiness uh, means that we deserve to die and receive God's judgment to go to hell and not heaven. In other words, we're disqualified for heaven. And that's because God being holy and us being not, the two cannot mix. So what are we going to do? Well, that's bad enough. The other problem is we don't even want to admit this dilemma, even though God already knows it all. And so out of love, God gave us something called the Ten Commandments. 
to show us that we're really disqualified for heaven. We're not holy, we're not perfect like him. Uh, let's take a, a look at just a few of those uh, here today. Uh, the Bible says, the Ten Commandments says, you shall not bear false witness. That means lying. How many of you ever told a lie before? Well, those of you who didn't raise your hand, you just did. Okay, let's be honest, folks. Let's not tell another lie. We've all lied. Well, believe it or not, that disqualifies you for heaven. That's how holy God is. He is the truth. He does not lie. And so that makes us a liar. Another of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not steal. Okay, how many have ever taken anything without permission? Well, all of our hands should have went up at that one. Uh, we've already said we're a bunch of liars. Okay, well, we've all done that. And it doesn't have to be a bank. Uh, it could be a pencil in the third grade. Uh, that means that we're a thief. Okay, the Bible says that God is so holy, even his name is holy. And that's why one of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. Hey, folks, isn't it ironic how... Uh, now the blessed name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says there's no other name under heaven by which men might be saved, Jesus Christ, has now become a cuss word. Folks, the Bible says that's the sin of blasphemy. Okay, and folks, let's be honest, we've used God's name in vain uh, before. The Bible also says in the Ten Commandments, you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus takes the standard even higher. He says, listen, it's not just physical adultery. He says, surely I tell you, that if you look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. God looks at the heart. One more out of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not murder. And you might say, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? The Bible says that the sin of hatred is akin to the sin of murder. You, in other words, in your heart, wish they were dead. You pulled the trigger, if you will, in your own heart. And the Bible says God sees that and it's just as bad. He knows the mind, he knows the hearts, the thoughts, and the intents that we have. Folks, that's just five out of the Ten Commandments. How are you doing? Not very well. None of us can keep them. They're God's x-ray to show us that we're disqualified. And so when, not if, your time comes, because we're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, you're going to have to stand before God, and you're going to have to uh, say who you really are. He already knows. Hey, God, let me into heaven. Uh, I'm, I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a blasphemer, adulterer, and a murderer. Folks, the Bible is clear. Such people as these will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's the problem. Here's the good news. God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him, what he did on the cross, on our behalf, that we will not perish, we will not go to hell, but he will give us the gift of eternal life. Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of all of our sins. It's something that we don't earn. We, we, we can't earn. It's a gift, the Bible calls it. And a gift cannot be earned. He was taking the death penalty in our place. That's what the cross was of the day. And that if we would just ask Jesus Christ to forgive us of our sins and believe that in our heart that God raised him from the grave, showing that his death is satisfactory to God to forgive us of all of our sins, no matter what we've done, the Bible says we shall be saved. Uh, the Apostle Paul says that if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the grave, we will be saved. Let me give you a common analogy of what God's doing and what he did for us with Jesus dying on the cross on our behalf. Uh, in life, we know that people uh, can be sentenced for a crime uh, to where they're actually on death row. Uh, the courtroom scene has completely finished. The gavel has already sounded. Uh, they are going to jail and they're just awaiting their time before they go to the death penalty. Uh, as they're sitting there in the jail cell, uh, it, it's a proven fact they did what they did. Everybody knows it. They're just waiting for that time for their uh, number to come up, so to speak, and walk down that hall and be executed. Uh, there's nothing they could do to reverse their crime. No amount of good works in that jail cell can reverse what they've done. It's too late. It's over. But believe it or not, there's one way that people even today can get off a death row. And that's if the one in authority, the governor, if he were to, out of mercy and kindness, nothing that the person did, because they don't earn it and they don't deserve it, and they can't earn it, if he would grant them what's called a pardon, out of the kindness of his heart, he has the authority to grant them a pardon and absolve them completely of their crimes uh, against the state. And did you know that there's actually been people that this has happened to, that the governor, out of mercy, has granted them a pardon, 
as a gift, and they've gone down to the jail cell and handed that person, extended it through the bars, here, I'm granting you a pardon. If you would just receive it, you can go free right now. And did you know that there's actually been people who've said, no, I don't want your pardon. And so what happened is of their own doing, even though they had a way out, they still had to go to the death penalty. Folks, can I tell you something? That's what God did for us with Jesus dying on the cross. He sent his son to take the death penalty in our place. He, God, has the authority to grant us through Jesus a complete pardon. And every day that you're still alive, God is extending to you spiritually this pardon. But a pardon does you no good unless you reach out and receive it by faith. Won't you do that today? Won't you call upon the name of Jesus Christ? Ask him to forgive you of all of your sins, to trust in his work on the cross, to pardon us from all of our crimes, our sins against God. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. But there's only one way to heaven. It's Jesus. There's only one way to get off a death row. It's through the cross of Jesus Christ. Won't you do that right now? Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church and, and Get a Life Ministries. And if there's anything that we can do for you, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to contact us. Uh, our number, our information will uh, come up here on the screen shortly. And uh, uh, if there's anything we could do for you, please don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89156. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.